do our investigation. Uh, what I can tell you is I've done some preliminary uh, reading about tasers. Um, and let me just say for, for you and your, your listeners and your, your viewers, I'm not an expert, but at least some of the information I've reviewed indicates that tasers are effective from between 15 and 25 feet. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll ask you not to hold me to that, but we rely certainly on what the experts say. Uh, but to, to your question, is that going to be a problem? Uh, no, that's going to be a problem for us. Mr. Brooks had demonstrated his intentions. Uh, it's important to remember one thing we haven't talked about today is that this situation is fluid. Um, whether he was, uh, if he was 18 feet away, uh, our client is, is, is closing the gap on him. So there's no obligation uh, for him to, to immediately stop. He can't, he's supposed to read Mr. Brooks' mind um, and stop. Uh, so to answer your question, no, it's, it's not going to be a problem for us. And let me say this, what we, something we haven't said. Our client did what he was trying to do that night. All right, one, one, one more time, listening to now, and he is saying, and, and his argument is, his conclusion is, at the time that Garrett Roth fired his weapon, Rayshard Brooks posed no danger. Let's listen to him explain why. We have also concluded that Roth was aware that the taser in Brooks' possession, that it was fired twice. And once it's fired twice, uh, it was not to him or to any other persons. Okay, now let's take a look again uh, from that Wendy. Again, we have a still, I believe, of, of when Rayshard Brooks uh, discharges it, and that's the second time that taser had been fired. So, Noah, how about the argument that that's the second time the taser's fired? Garrett Roth knows. There's no more danger. It's only got, you can only fire it twice. Well, I know it, Vinny, and you know it, and Bill knows it because we've watched the video. What our client knows or knew that night, we're not going to discuss. But what I can tell you, it can still be used as a deadly or an offensive weapon. Uh, if Mr. Brooks came into close enough contact with Garrett Rolfe, he can use that taser to Similar to way, the way Officer Brosnan is using it, it's called, I think, a just done, where you actually contact the taser to the body of somebody and pull the trigger. And, you know, our client, as Bill said, that situation, the entire time since uh, he was trying to be placed under arrest, Mr. Brooks escalated, right? It comes from I'm resisting to I'm wrestling to I'm punching a police officer in the head to I'm firing a taser at one officer to I'm firing a taser at another officer. So, you know, what's next? You, you know, for Paul Howard to say he wasn't doing anything, that's ridiculous. And guess what, Vinny? Let, let's assume that Mr. Brooks would have not been killed. Paul Howard would have indicted him. He would have indicted him for DUI. He would have indicted him for uh, felony obstruction. He would have indicted him for at least two counts of aggravated assault. He would have indicted him for robbery, for taking the taser. He would have indicted him for taking a weapon off a police officer, which is a felony, and he would have, been, would have indicted him for possession of a weapon, firearm by a convicted felon, because a taser could be considered that for the fact that, that Mr. Brooks took it and possessed it, and he's not allowed to. Fascinating interview, and so much more we'll continue discussing with this case. We have to step aside and take a break. Before we do, I want to tell you what is coming up next. Court TV 